Ready? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the committee meeting of January 23rd, 2018. Ms. Borg, please call the roll. Committee Member Schett. Here. Committee Member Delcor. Here. Committee Member Sirachi. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Here. Mayor McCauley. Here. Administrator please. Ferreira. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm Attorney Willard. Okay. Okay. They'll be joining us shortly, I believe. Um, join me in a salute to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, that notice of this meeting was made by the posting on the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on January 23rd, 2018. Mayor, let the record reflect that um, Committee Man Sirachi joined the meeting at 7.34, please. Okay, thank you. So first, this evening, uh, there's an approval of minutes for January 2nd. May I have a motion to approve January 2nd, 2018 reorganization minutes? So moved. Second, Mayor. Thank you. <coughs> Any comments from the dais? Any minutes? Any comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Commander Rochette? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Sirachi? Yes. Deputy Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. <coughs> I will move on to reports from committee liaisons and receipt of reports, petitions, and communications this evening. And first up would be Committee Member Shet. From the Police Department, the Hillsborough Township Police Department has partnered with Somerset County Prosecutor's Office and Stop It, a leading provider of anonymous reporting software solutions. This application provides residents with a safe, secure, and anonymous way to provide law enforcement with information or criminal intelligence and to report non-emergency incidents or concerns. The anonymous message will be received by personnel from the Somerset County Communications Center along with detectives from the prosecutor's office. The Hillsborough Police Department would like to stress that this application does not replace 911. Individuals need, if individuals needing immediate assistance or observing a situation requiring an immediate response are urged to call 911. Stop It app can be downloaded for free on your mobile device from the App Store or from Google Play Store. Once downloaded, it can be accessed Somerset Strong by entering the access code Somerset NJ, all in capitals, Somerset NJ. From the EBDC, nearly 30 local business owners braved the snow last Wednesday morning to attend the Business Summit Roundtable discussion with the Building Department. Hosted by the Township's Business Association, led by the business advocate David Coyce. Administrator Anthony Ferreira opened the event, welcoming business owners and providing the agenda and format for the roundtable. It was a very informative, well-attended event. We look forward to the continuation of discussions as volunteers were sought for a subcommittee that will be meet in the next 30 days and quarterly to continue the ongoing dialogue. That is all. Mayor, let the record reflect that Attorney Willard joined the meeting at 737. Thank you. Okay, Committee Man Delcor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple of items. Um, had the opportunity yesterday to uh, conduct a couple of uh, sessions for for swearing in, um, although uh, it's heading for a committee member Shed on the EBDC uh, swearing in last night. And I'd like to thank all the uh, volunteers there, in particular uh, Ken Hestag, who's going to be the <coughs> chairman, uh, and uh, Chuck Ruggieri is the vice chair of the EBDC. Uh, I also uh, attended the uh, Youth Services Commission uh, reorganization meeting last night. And um, once again, Pastor Tim Wolf is the chair of that commission, uh, and Diane DeGarris is the, is the uh, uh, I'm sorry, and um, Sally Trions is the vice chair. And uh, in addition, we had the environmental commission uh, meeting last night. Uh, and as uh, per the mayor appointment, uh, Deb Boye is the chairman of that, uh, of that commission. And... Uh, Mike Foley was Neil. 
No, I think it was by. Um, anyway, <coughs> Deb Boy is the chair. So, a um, couple other items uh, just to uh, connect on tonight. From the building department, I think we talked about uh, last time with the with the uh, freeze that we had in the air. Uh, there has been a uh, a rush of uh, pipes bursting due to the cold weather. So, just a reminder that we do recommend uh, people that if you have uh, pipes that are in crawl spaces, that you try to get those insulated. Uh, and if you're going away for an extended period of time, uh, avoid turning your heat off completely. Um, it should uh, should remain on just enough so that you can make sure that your pipes aren't freezing. And if your <coughs> HVAC stops working and needs to be replaced, uh, the building department should be notified so that they can make sure that there's uh, we get a licensed contractor uh, out there within, uh, within that notification period. Uh, from the health department, uh, we are having our ra annual rabies vaccination. It's going to be held uh, this Saturday, the 27th, from 10 a.m. till noon. This is a free clinic that we offer for all cats and dogs in town. Um, so if you have anyone that, uh, if anyone has a pet that they'd like to bring in for that rabies vaccination, uh, please see the township website and the e-news for additional information. But that will be held uh, here at the municipal building. And uh, also- Mayor, I apologize. Um, on the screen it says 8 a.m. until noon. It is 10 a.m. until noon. Yeah, and at the public works, works garage. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're having a very uh, serious flu season this year. Uh, the 2017-2018 flu season is in full swing, and we do have a significant uh, increase in activity in our area. Um, the flu season does run through May, so it's not too late. If you haven't yet gotten one to get a flu shot, um, you cannot get the flu from the flu shot. Um, so just, I know there's some people that uh, are worried about it, but uh, the, there may be some, some side effects, but uh, it is not the flu that, that you, you do get um, with, the, uh, with the shot. And uh, the flu shot can take up to two weeks to be fully effective. So if you're concerned about um, uh, getting the flu this year, uh, please make sure you go out. There's a number of uh, locations uh, in town uh, you can see the, the health department website for more information uh, about uh, how to get it and where to get a flu shot. From the recreation department, um, winter programs are underway, uh, but there uh, is still time if you'd like to register for certain events. So please contact the recreation office to check availability. And the spring season is quickly approaching, uh, not soon enough in my view. We've got to still get it through winter, um, but spring is coming up quickly. So. Uh, don't forget to register for recreation soccer uh, or girls softball. Registrations will end at the beginning of March. So if you want to get those, uh, those sign-ups in, make sure you're, uh, you get that spot on there. And finally, our Parks and Recreation program is now on Instagram for a chance to see the parks as well as recreation programs from a new, unique perspective. Uh, go to Instagram and follow us at, uh, at Hillsborough Rec. So... Uh, that's all for me. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, you. let the record reflect that Administrator Freyar joined the meeting at 737, please. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <coughs> okay, Deputy Mayor McThompson. I was going to say McThompson. McThompson. Um, <laughs> Irish, not that Irish. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple things. Uh, first, I want to congratulate the Hillsborough Education Association on their successful event they had this past Saturday. It was a community discussion uh, about the effects of opiates uh, and other uh, drugs and alcohol and other addictive, su addictive substances um, in our school system. Uh, they had a really great event. Uh, I just want to thank our police chief and our school resource officer, Cristraldi, for also being part of that uh, to make that event successful. So uh, again, thank you for you know, the Education Association for being in front of this uh, very important topic. Uh, from the finance department, a quick little update. Uh, the annual assessment cards will be mailed in February. Property owners are reminded that these cards show the assessed value and billed taxes only. They do not reflect actual tax, pay tax payments made in 2017. And anyone wishing for a printout of the 2017 tax payments can contact the finance department who can mail or email you a statement showing the taxes paid. 
including any prepayments for 2018 taxes made in 2017. It is also time to renew your dog license. If you have not done that, please see the finance department uh, for your renewal, and I believe you can still do that on our website as of this time. So, uh, that is all for me this evening. Thank you, Mayor. I'll call again, sorry. And Committee Mr. Rachi. Thank Hysterical. you, Mayor. <laughs> Guess we saved the best for us, right? <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's all good. Um, just wanted to say uh, this past weekend, uh, Saturday evening, attended. Uh, <clears throat> Hillsborough uh, Volunteer Fire Company number two uh, installation dinner where the uh, township uh, clerk Pam Borick swore in the uh, fire police officers. I was also joined by Commandman Greg Burchett and Chief Powell. And I uh, just want to congratulate <clears throat> newly installed Chief Schaefer uh, for a good year going forward. Uh, with regards to some uh, boards and commissions that reorganized. The planning board reorganized um, last week, not the week before. And just want to congratulate Sean Lapani for being named chairman again, uh, Neil Julian, vice chair, and Ken Hashtag as secretary. And also the, uh, oh, I think we got a picture up there. Mm -hmm. so. And the uh, board of adjustments also reorged. Uh, I want to congratulate Steve Monte for being named chair and Frank Herbert for being named vice chair. So a few uh, items from, from the engineering department. Um, I mentioned this last week. Again, we would just like to uh, advise property owners that some pump discharges to roadways and or sidewalks uh, can and have caused icing conditions uh, on, the, uh, on various sidewalks and roadways throughout the township. Um, engineer department has been advising uh, property owners to please remove the discharge uh, uh, <clears throat> pointed towards those areas. Uh, icing conditions are obviously hazardous to pedestrians and motorists, and we did have reports, and even though it hasn't felt like it uh, this past week, but when it was really cold before, uh, we did have icing conditions and where we did have pedestrians full on these sidewalks. So. Uh, and the township does not want to get into take any legal enforcement actions, but uh, <clears throat> which could involve uh, summonses or ticketing. But again, we just implore any you know, homeowners that may have their sump pumps discharging towards sidewalks and roadways just to please remove them before it turns cold again. And from uh, Department of Public Works, um, on our township website under their department heading, uh, they've come up, uh, put up a complete listing of winter operations, tips, newsletters uh, regarding snowplow safety, and some of the frequently asked questions that they receive <coughs> regarding snow removal. So please go to the township website and look under the Department of Public Works uh, for this information. And that's all I have this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. A few things for me this evening. I just wanted to uh, recap this morning, as we had promised in January that we were going to hold a meeting with NJDOT on the update of the Route 206 bypass. <coughs> Those in attendance were NJDOT um, from George Worth, who was the project manager, Meredith Hammond, who's community relations for NJDOT, Matt Loper for Somerset County Engineer, myself, Administrator Ferreira, Township Planner David Maskey, and Assistant Township Engineer Tom Bellinger, as well as our clerk, Pam. This project is designed to improve roadway safety and reduce the congestion through Hillsborough. And I know it's been an ongoing project. Construction is slated to begin this spring, so as soon as it's warm out, they'll probably get getting to work. Um, so this spring is scheduled to be completed in 2020. On the southern end of the project, it includes the limits from the Mountain View Road section to Hillsborough Road, and on the northern section, it is from Amwa Road to Old Somerville Road. The construction contract was signed earlier this month, and the project is fully funded, so they will be moving forward in the spring. So we're very excited to see that move forward, and I'll be keeping you posted of the uh, actual construction time. I want to say thank you to Bridgeway Senior Care of Hillsborough as well for inviting myself, Pam Borick, the clerk, and uh, David Coyce, who is our business advocate, to read a proclamation for the activity staff in honor of National Activity Professionals Week yesterday. It's really nice to visit some of the businesses and they're acknowledging their staff there. It was a nice, well-attended event. I wanted to say thank you to them. Back on the 13th of January, we attended the, we attended the Devils game, which was uh, the Devils Flyers. There's been some disruption with our... <laughs> you can see Anthony smiling over here. He's obviously a Flyer fan because they won that night. 
Um, but it was my hometown series, or my town series was funded, funded by them and featured there. So um, our own veteran here in town, Ron Newsom, was the honored hero of the game. It was a really fun night, very well attended, and uh, big support from Hillsborough. Looking forward to next year to see who wins that game. Just a reminder, the township has once again joined the Hillsborough School District, so Hillsborough students can participate in the Lewis Bay II Future Municipal Leader Scholarship uh, Competition. The information can be found on the Naviance program utilized by the school district. In addition, information for the scholarship can be found at the guidance office as well at the high school. As always, I'd like to remind you to stay connected here with Hillsborough Township. You can uh, stay connected with events and more via the Friday e-newsletter that we have every Friday and with Twitter. TV29 and Hillsborough YouTube channel showcase our meetings, and Swift Reach 911 for traffic and emergency notifications. If you are not signed up, we can help you do that, or you can certainly go online and sign up for those. A quick appointment this evening, mayor appointment uh, correction for the Historic Preservation Committee, alternate number one, to your term to Vince Lapani. Just a correction of that, so he'll be serving again this year and next year. Moving on to proclamations this evening, we ask that after you receive your own proclamation, please resume to your seat, and we'll pause after that to allow for your departure. Okay? So I'll be coming down. Anybody want to come down for the Boy Scouts? challenges so first we'll be inviting up John Welch Whereas John Welch is a senior at Hillsborough High School and a member of Boy Scout Troop 489, has recently earned the status of Eagle Scout, and whereas the Hillsborough Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough recognizes the many hours John devoted to attaining the status of Eagle Scout, working with diligence and making sacrifices in order to achieve this highly coveted position, and whereas John has served the Boy Scouts in an exemplary manner and is deserving of the honor bestowed him, Whereas John Eagle Scout Project consisted of constructing helmet and shoulder racks for the Junior Raiders Field Complex, the racks provide organization and storage of hundreds of different sized helmets. The project involved designing the racks, cutting and grinding the pieces of metal, welding the frame together and painting. And whereas John was patrol leader, assistant patrol leader, and troop guide of Troop 489, and whereas John participated in Hillsborough High School across his freshman year, and whereas John serves as an example to the youth of Hillsborough Township through his high-level leadership and community service, we are very proud he is a member of our community. Now therefore be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the township of Hillsborough, do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to John Welch's for having achieved the status of Eagle Scout, an honor for both him and for those who have guided him, and best wishes for a bright future. Congratulations. So I would like to thank my mom and my dad for helping me through all this and like guiding me through everything and making me able to accomplish this. And to anyone who actually like helped me during this, I would like to thank also. And that will be it.
Whereas Tyler Welches, a recent graduate of Hillsborough High School and a member of Boy Scout Troop 489, has recently earned the status of Eagle Scout, and whereas the Hillsborough Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough recognizes the many hours Tyler devoted to attaining the status of Eagle Scout, working with diligence and making sacrifices in order to achieve this highly coveted position, and whereas Tyler has served the Boy Scouts in an exemplary manner and is deserving of the honors bestowed upon him, and whereas Tyler's Eagle Scout project consisted of constructing a shadow box fence for the Junior Raiders football organization to give privacy to the women's and men's restrooms. The project involved inquiring into the need for permits, drawing plans, digging holes for the posts, building shadow boxes, and whereas Tyler was historian, assistant troop leader, and patrol leader, and whereas Tyler participated in Hills Hillsborough High School across his freshman year, and whereas Tyler serves as an example to the youth of Hillsborough, through his high level of leadership and community service, we are very proud he's a member of our community. Therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the township committee, do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Tyler Welches for having achieved the status of Eagle Scout and honor for both him and those who have guided him and best wishes for a bright future. Congratulations. Uh, I wanted to thank the township for having us tonight, as well as sponsoring the Hillsborough Rewards Card Program. Uh, our troop has benefited from this program, and we are very appreciative. Thank you. Jacob Worsman. <laughs> Whereas Jacob Worsman, a senior at Hillsborough High School and Somerset County Vote Tech and a member of Boy Scout Troop 489, has recently earned the status of Eagle Scout. And whereas the Hillsborough Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough recognizes the many hours Jacob has devoted to attaining the status of Eagle Scout on May 1st, 2017, working with diligence and making sacrifices in order to achieve this highly coveted position. And whereas Jacob has served the Boy Scouts in an exemplary manner and is deserving of the honor bestowed upon him. And whereas Jacob's Eagle Scout project consisted of constructing benches and tables for the Somerset County Hillsborough Senior Center near the outdoor bocce court. Jacob raised over $300 by holding a spaghetti dinner. The project required 31 scouts and volunteers and consisted of more than 159 hours of service. And whereas Jacob was on staff at Okanikan Scout Camp for two years as quartermaster and a facilities assistant, and whereas Jacob serves as an example to the youth of Hillsborough Township through his high level leadership and community service, we are very proud that he is a member of our community. Now therefore be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Jacob Wurtzman for having achieved the status of Eagle Scout and honor for both him and those who have guided him. Best wishes for a bright future. Congratulations. Uh, I just want to say thank you to my parents for always being there and helping me out through the Eagle and just through life in general and everyone else. Whereas Justin Worsman, a sophomore at Hillsborough High School and a member of Boy Scout Troop 489, has recently earned the status of Eagle Scout 
And whereas the Hillsborough Township Committee of the Township of Hillsborough recognizes the many hours Justin devoted to attaining the status of Eagle Scout on September 18th, 2017, working with diligence and making sacrifices in order to achieve this highly coveted position. And whereas Justin has served the Boy Scouts in an exemplary manner and is deserving of the honor bestowed upon him. Whereas Justin's Eagle Scout project consisting of refurbishing the rope course climbing wall at the Girl Scouts heart of New Jersey Camp DeWitt, the project was to clear overgrowth of bushes and trim tree branches and rake the course area. Mulch was spread and a drainage area was created to collect water and prevent soil erosion. The project took more than 142 hours of service and involved 33 volunteers. And whereas Justin has earned six Eagle Palms and as a staff counselor for Okanakan, Okanakan, did I say that right? Okay. <laughs> Scout camp. And whereas Justin is a member of the Hillsboro High School Team 75 Robotics Club, and whereas Justin serves as an example of the youth of Hillsboro Township through his high level leadership and community service, we are very proud he is a member of our community. Now therefore be it proclaimed that we the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee do hereby recognize and extend our sincere congratulations to Justin for having achieved the status of Eagle Scout and honor for both him and those who had guided him and best wishes for a bright future. Congratulations. Well, I would like to thank my parents for helping me with my project and forcing me to finish the paperwork <laughs> on time. That's right, paperwork, right? Lots of paperwork these days. <laughs> Okay, we wanted to say congratulations again to our proclamation awards this evening, and um, we'll be taking a short break, so if you would like to leave at this time, you're welcome to do so, and congratulations. Thank you. All right, moving on to new business this evening. There is none at this time. Moving on to public comment on new business and matters not on the agenda this evening. Committee, <coughs> Central Power and Light, 52 Chatham Road, City of Summit. I just wanted to stop in and uh, let the committee know that we're again holding an open house for our PSI program. It's our two-year degree program where we train the next generation of line workers and substation workers. We have an open house on February 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Raritan Valley Community College. Again, it's a two-year program. We pay for the tuition, the books, the tools, the equipment, all the gear the guys need to uh, learn to become linemen. It's a very selective process, and after the two years, if they've completed the program successfully, they're almost always guaranteed a position with First Energy, either as a line worker or as a substation worker. So certainly would encourage anybody who's not looking to go a, a college track to join us at JCPNL and become a lineman or line worker, I should say, and uh, or substation worker, and again, open house on the 13th of February, 6 to 8 at RBCC. And as always, happy to answer any questions or concerns you might have about JCPNL. I don't think there are any of the time. Sounds like a great program. It is. It is. We have many years. We have the program here. We'll be putting it up on the... Uh, we'll put it on our Friday e-news. Friday e-news. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for stopping by, as always. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Closing public <coughs> comment. Moving on to public hearing. Special assessment for... Oh. Oh, sorry. Didn't even see you. You just walked in, so... Okay. Opening public comment. John Vigiato, 62 Peterson Road. Um, Did I get to stop me? <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. Uh, last week I st stood before you and asked you about information relating to uh, EMS. Um, I wanted to know if, uh, I think it was uh, Mr. Ferraro <coughs> mentioned that we would be getting additional information, you would seek additional information for um, the uh, Robert Johnson, which is supposed to be provided based on the contract. One of the things that I mentioned was the lack of dates and the detailed information. I want to know if that information if it had been received. 
I think the last meeting we had mentioned uh, to that you were going to come in, we invited you, I think the last two or three meetings, to come in and speak to uh, Mr. Sheridan and get that data, but nobody really has contacted him. No, and so. I said there's no reason for me to come in or anybody else to come in because you, the officials here should be enforcing the contract. But let me hold that a second. So my only point is there's no reason to come in if the data doesn't exist either. So my okay, question John, is. Okay, we'll, John, we'll reach out to you because this is really a public comment and you're coming up and asking questions and, and asking us to provide you data, which really isn't Part no, of the I'm just asking if the public. data exists. Okay. I'm not asking you to provide oh, it to okay. me now. I'm just asking, <coughs> does it exist? Yeah, and, and, and to answer that, I think a couple things. You guys have opened the world, and the data that we have, we have provided. So the the numbers that I think back last week were the 89.5, and and we we had mentioned to, to give John a call, and we would go over some of that data. So no one's really contacting him, but you guys keep coming up here and, and you've opened the clerk. We've given you all the data we have. So right, again, yeah. we put those numbers up and those are the numbers. So, But those are the numbers that are provided by Robert Johnson. Correct. And there's no way of you verifying that data because you don't have the individual dates right. of and, and, record for and, each and, incident. And, but in all fairness, that we take those numbers just like we got numbers for years and years and years ago. Mm -hmm. and. We have contacted and the chiefs right over there, and we've we've talked to the police, and they've had absolutely zero issues with calls. We've gotten letters over letters saying that they're doing a great job. So what you're saying is we're getting numbers from them. So you're saying we shouldn't believe them when we have no data or any type of calls or any issues from the police who are there. They're responding before the police get there, and in some cases, so we see no issues, and we're getting the data. And we are going back to them when we see it below the 90%, which we have, to see what the issues were. And they're looking to correcting those. So I'm not sure if, if we were getting bombarded with calls or there were issues with that data, we would. Just like before with HEMSCOR, that we got data from them. So if people are, you know, are, are calling us, we're believing the data that is provided to us. And again, I've been here a long time, and there was issues with the previous provider, I would call the chief and we would work those out and, and do that. So we're not doing anything differently than we would normally. Now, we, what, what you said before is correct. We're supposed to put that data up, which we do, and we're providing the data and, and the numbers, which we were supposed to by the contract, we are. You're asking for all the backup stuff. We don't have that. So what you open that, we're only giving what we do have. And I think Mr. Willard had mentioned some to that point as well last week. Okay. Well, can you, I you, maybe just? If I, if I, may, the, 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 if I, I just want to piggyback off of him because I know what you're going to ask already. Okay. So the the issue for the data is we have all the information for the months. It's it may, if it may not have the specific dates on it, but we can reconcile the number of calls per period against what uh, what is reconciled on there to determine if the number of calls are generally accurate. Um, and that uh, we know what the call volumes that meet the service level uh, versus that that don't. If there is more information that you want, John, I'm not sure we're, we're, we're in a position to provide it to you. We're, we've received from Robert Wood what is required under the contract. We have our people uh, internally, specifically John, reconciling the data with them and understanding the periods as to why they're not, uh, why they, they fell short of that 90% number. And they're working on a plan to ensure that going forward, uh, we're above that, uh, that target KPI that's in the contract. The police, uh, the police department, John, also receives the information from each call. Correct, right, Chief, in the back, so? We, we don't get the time of dispatch and arrival. That information is not Okay. So we can request that too if there's something more specific you're looking for, but well, that's all we need. That's in there. So, yeah. <coughs> that's in there, yeah. But, Mr. Ferrer, you said we don't know of any issues. And to your point also, Mr. Delcourt, that you said we're reconciling the data. My question is, how can you know if there's any issues unless you've evaluated the data and how are you reconciling it unless you have the dates? So let me finish. So for each month, it gives a breakdown. 
without the dates of each call, you have no idea which call falls into which month. So you can't be reconciling it unless you have that. So what data are specifically are you looking for then? The dates of each. And incident. why would that be? Why would that be important to you? Because that's the only way to assure that the date of each call matches the statistics provided mm -hmm. by Robert Wood Johnson for each okay. month. Okay. So you don't think that Robert Wood Johnson is providing the correct information? I don't. I don't know. That's what. But they I do provide check. it in month mm -hmm. blocks, if I remember correctly. Right. They do. Right. right. Month, so yeah. it's every month. No, they provide the summary in monthly blocks, mm -hmm. but the data is for a quarterly period. And you have no way of knowing <coughs> which month. Okay, John. Those so we, we understand back. what okay, you're asking. I got, I got what you're asking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'm you sorry, want it by just... date. We did talk about that the last time. Yeah. My understanding is they don't have it by date, or that we don't have it by date right now. Currently, I believe John was going to by specific date. Um, I don't know if we have that currently. So no, we we have asked you several times to call, um, which you are more than willing to do here. You know, every day. So right. just but call the front again, office. I'm going to call just to find out that there's no data to review. So I'm asking. No, you can no, call to find out whether they can receive it. You're not happy with the data. It. No, the, the, no, I didn't to say, say that. Not, there, is, there is data, John. I didn't say you not asked, happy with you it. You asked us for, no, but, but you are because you're here asking for more. So what I'm saying is that you have the data, just like we do, that lists in blocks by period. It doesn't give you the date, but it tells you all the response times within that period that is, that is reconciles to the summary data. And you can that. look at that and say, yes, these calls were within the cycle, this, these calls were outside, just like, just like uh, we have to do. Again, if you're not clear on this, we've asked you many times to come to the township and we'll sit down with you and review it with you. I don't know what else to tell you. Well, if, if I may, the contract says that the data should be verified, okay? I mean, that's the point of getting the data, is to make sure that they're upholding to their contract. Mm -hmm. You have no way of verifying that. And I'm asking for this body to do what they're supposed to to ensure that the contract is being enforced. I can assure you that we are definitely doing how? that. If Just because your specific <coughs> ask of how it's verified doesn't fit what you want to hear, uh, doesn't no, mean that, that we're not verifying it. exact dates of each month. They can move calls from one to another to make it even out better. John, can I, just out so can I just suggest one thing, though? And I, and I know you're in the building quite often. Can you at least spend five or ten minutes with sure. Mr. Sheridan. I mean, you come into the office, I in. see I it. just want to know is the data Wait, available. so, but, but can you at least start there first? We did, in all fairness, we did ask you to, to at least meet with, and Mr. Sheridan's been waiting for, for you to, to, to pop in, and he wants to have that conversation with you. So if there's something we can potentially give you, we're going to give it to you. But I think if I just ask you, because he's really the one responsible for that, so to come up here and keep asking these guys some questions when we've asked you to sit down with them, in all fairness, spend a couple minutes with John might answer some of your questions. Okay. I mean, and the, the other piece of information that's missing, and according to the contract it should be provided, are the fees, the financial information. And when we opened that information, it, that was not available either. And we specifically got a response from Pam Boric, the clerk, stating that the information is not available. Okay. So I'll come in. That would also be proprietary um, financial information under the Open Public Me um, Records Act that wouldn't be provided anyway. That's How so? It doesn't have the name of the person. It's, it's proprietary, just a confidential, financial information. There's Why recognizing it's in your contract. There's a recognizing. You know, you're asking for you to have it. And what I'm saying is, under the Open Public Records Act, mm -hmm. there is an exception for proprietary, confidential, financial information, which that information would fall under. But that wasn't the response we were given. We were told it is unavailable. Uh, that response also should have been given to you, both. <clears throat> okay. During the last meeting, I made a commitment to provide you with the bill that specifies that Borough Green was uh, researched, is how it's put, by um, specifically Mr. Ferrara, and it was Mr. Willard who <coughs> Yeah. Uh, Bill but, but in fairness, yes, your comment was they investigated uh, okay. me. Yeah. Thank you. Can I not the Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a, John, to, it, like like uh, Delacour no. did mention, you said that we investigated yes. you, but yeah. you you are not <clears throat> Burrow Green. Burrow no, Green's an entity, I'm not. correct? So, okay, so, just to be fair. Yeah, I mean, it's true. Okay, right. I said that. Right. I haven't finished my comment. Okay, any further comments? Oh, yes, I, I'm okay. not done yet. Okay. So, 
as Mr. Sarachi pointed out, that I did run in 2014, and I was unsuccessful to um, be elected to the Township Committee. And with that information, I decided to do a little bit more research, and I found the press release from that date, mm -hmm. and I'll provide this to you as well. And this press release is dated two days prior to that research being done. So my question is, why was Brogreen being researched? Now, this I'll is tell you exactly why. Okay. Because there was, an, there was a, uh, a, a session that we had here at the municipal building where there was a, um, Thank you. where there were a, a logo contest uh, that came up and uh, lo and behold, Burl Green ended up with, uh, 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 with exactly what we, was part of the, uh, the logo contest that we ran. Okay. Thank you. Any further comment? No, thank you. Thank you. Any further public comments? Okay. Seeing none, closing public comment. Mayor, uh, now I'd just like to point out um, this record that uh, Mr. Beggiato has provided us. Um, I know that they've opened all my records for billing purposes. He came up last in meeting and he indicated that the Township Committee authorized an investigation of him. Um, we never investigated him. There was never an authorization of investigation of him. As a matter of fact, looking at the basis for his statement, which he's now provided us, I want to read it into the record. Okay. It says, Burrow Green, teleconference with Ferreira, review website. Total amount of time, 0. 0.6 tenths of an hour, which is less than 36 minutes. Um, if I recall correctly, because I didn't recall when he mentioned it last week, I had no idea about it. Mm -hmm. I believe the issue was, at the time, it was a legal question, and it was a valid legal question. Mm -hmm. And the legal question was, they were concerned that Borough Green's website gave the appearance right. that it was either a department or affiliated somehow with the township. So that was the conversation I had with Mr. Frere, and I was asked to look into it. It was not an investigation of Borough Green, and it wasn't an investigation of Mr. Beggiato. And as you can see, so to put things in context, and I'll let <coughs> anybody in the public make their own determinations, the billing entry, he's made a statement that he was investigated and an investigation was authorized of him and directed by the Township Committee. And the basis for his statement is that billing entry. I'll let everybody form their own judgments. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, okay, we're going to move on to the public hearing this evening. There is a public hearing for the special assessment for the sanitary sewer extension project for Camden Road, Euclid Avenue, Spring Valley, Willow Road, and Winding Way. We will now begin the public hearing for the sanitary sewer extension project report of the tax assessor recommending a special assessment for the 2014 sanitary sewer extension project. On December 21st, 2017, the tax assessor held a public hearing on the draft report. Therefore, the tax assessor finalized the report and submitted it to the Township Committee for public hearing and adoption. This public hearing was noticed in accordance with state statute governing special assessments. And uh, we are going to open now for public hearing. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Do we need a roll call now? No. Or no? Okay. We'll begin with Dr. Belnay, who's here this evening, our Township <coughs> Health Officer, who will discuss the reasons why the Sanitary Sewer Extension Project was necessary and benefits of the project to the property owners. So. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for having me here this evening. Um, if I can give you the background, uh, I'll leave the good news to my colleagues back there about the outcome of the project. Um, this project was the fourth residential sewer extension project that we undertook as the Township. Um, the first being the Highland Drive Riverview Terrace project. This is over a decade of time, mm -hmm. all right? These things don't happen quickly. It's a lot of work involved, um, preparation, planning, engineering, and actual construction. So the first one we did was Highland Drive and Riverview Terrace, and that connected 30 properties in the southeast uh, section of our township to the sanitary sewer, um, replacing their failing septic systems. The next one we undertook 
was on Brook Drive, Arthur Road, and uh, Mountain View Road. That was part of the Beezer Homes uh, off-site improvements. Um, we did 70 homes over there. These are homes from the 1960s that had ancient septic systems that were in constant failure. Um, the third project we did, and this was the biggest of all projects, was the Claremont development. You'll all remember that one. I think you were all here for that. Um, that was 193 properties. Um, most of those were half-acre lots uh, with failing septics, um, and that was a three-year undertaking along uh, main extension up Hamilton Road to reach this existing sewer line, and uh, I'm happy to report that uh, just about everybody in Claremont Development is now connected. And the one before us tonight is the um, what we call the Windy Way Spring Valley, uh, Camden Road and Euclid Avenue. They're a split neighborhood project. Winding uh, Way and Spring Valley, as you know, is off of Willow Road, and uh, Camden and Euclid is just off of Township Line Road, and that included 39 properties. Um, that was initiated by the residents of those two neighborhoods who also suffered from old mid-1960s to mid-1970 septic systems that were problematic, uh, overflowing to the surface, um, posing a significant public health threat. <coughs> So we agreed to undertake the fourth project. Um, and um, with that, um, we were able to uh, uh, engineer it um, at a reasonable uh, cost. Um, the project got off to kind of a shaky start. As you'll recall, OCS was the low bidder. And they came in and they failed within several months of starting the project. But very fortunately, the bonding company uh, stepped up and took the project on and they brought in Stillo Associates who is the um, utility contractor who's been working at Country Classics for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, very proven company, uh, outstanding work. They got it back on track, they got it back on schedule and they brought it in significantly under budget which is uh, what Nancy will be telling you this evening. Uh, I'll leave that for her. Um, the residents with serious septic failure problems have been connected, although the project uh, is still in the last stages of being accepted by the MUA and your assessment being approved. Uh, it was so bad out there that the MUA said we've inspected and approved the work that's been done there. Let's let the residents with problems hook up. Of the 39 residents, all but nine have since hooked up. That's how bad the situation was out there for them. Um, they're delighted with the outcome. They were here for the public hearing. We had very positive comments uh, from the residents who participated in the project. All the road reconstruction work has been done. All the easement restoration has been done. The place looks great. Um, I'm sure it's enhanced their property values. I know it's improved their quality of life. Um, and the uh, additional benefit is we've diverted the nitrogen that would be going into the groundwater from the septic systems, and now their wells are going to be protected. So we have environmental enhancements as well. So I have only good news to report to you tonight. Okay, Very great. Nice. Thank, Thank you. you. It's good news. <coughs> Thank you, Glenn. Next, um, Deborah Blaney, our tax assessor, will discuss our special assessment uh, report and analysis. read an overview of the report and how it came to be. So I'm just going to read exactly what I read the night of the hearing and it just gives okay. some information on the overall process. Yeah, can you speak into the microphone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so prior to the onset of a sanitary sewer project, I acquire sales of comparable properties to those properties within the project area that have sold. The comparable sale properties are connected to a public sewer. This analysis will show the difference of value of properties 
that utilize a septic system versus properties that are connected to a, a public sewer line. This comparison entails sales of residential properties that are similar in design, square footage of living area, basement area, acreage, and other attributes that influence the market value of property. <clears throat> this is the same type of research and analysis that is used for reassessment and tax appeal purposes. Each sale is closely compared to the subject and adjustments are made for individual differences. In my opinion, the difference in value is attributable to a property improved with a public sewer. The analysis must be restricted to a review of properties that have sold prior to the commencement of the sewer project. Sales that were chosen for the market analysis were usable arm's length transactions between a willing buyer and a willing seller. Non-usable sales were excluded, were excluded such as, but not limited to, short sales, foreclosures, and transactions between family members. The sales that were chosen occurred during a six-year period due to the lack of sales from 2013 and prior. Typically, three sales are used within a two-year period, but due to the lack of sales within the project area, I had used four sales. On or about April 21st, 2015, the construction for the project had commenced. The comparable sales selected had to have occurred before the start of the project. As you review the grids, you will notice that each property that's sold within the project area is compared to similar style homes throughout the district. Adjustment for differences are made to reflect the subject property and are a dollar amount per square foot, per room count, bath counts, fireplaces, basements, whether or not they're full, partial, and whether or not they're finished or unfinished. Also taken into consideration are the value of outbuildings and pools. The differences in dollar amounts are determined by market trends and the appraisal software used in our department that is approved by the State Division of Taxation. After the adjustments are made, the final adjusted value of the sale is compared to the sale price of the subject, and the difference, it determined, the difference is determined to be attributed to having a connection to the public sewer line. After all the grids were completed, the range of differential value was between 49865 to 57461 In conclusion of my analysis, it is my professional opinion, once a property is connected to a public sewer line, the market value of a property <coughs> increases. I would like to state that this does not mean I will automatically increase the assessed values of the subject area since the properties are now connected to public sewer. Hillsborough Township is an assessing annual reassessing district as all other properties within the district. I will have to analyze the assessed values <coughs> of the subject area and market trends to determine the assessed values for future tax years. That's it. Okay. Appreciate that. Nice recap. Thank you, Ms. Blaney. You're welcome. And uh, Nancy Costa is also here this evening, our township <coughs> CFO, who discussed billing and payment of the special assessment. Did you want to spot on the dais, Nancy, or do you want to come up to the? Okay. <laughs> Good evening. This is a 20-year special assessment with an interest rate of 2%, which is a blended rate because we were able to borrow 25% of the money through New Jersey EIT funding at 0% interest, and the other 75% at a fluctuating 3 to 5% rate. So 2% was more than a fair rate to charge the property owners. The special assessment is going to be billed quarterly, with the first billing due in March. What we decided to do was bill it quarterly, but in the months when neither a sewer payment to the Municipal Utilities Authority nor a tax payment were due, so as not to bombard people with payments in the, in the same months. Mm -hmm. So in the off months, we will bill this out. The first payment will be due on March 1st of 2018 in the amount of 383.64. There's a 10-day grace period on every quarter, after which the standard interest of 8% on the first 1500 and 18% on the amount over 1500 would be <coughs> charged. If the property is sold, the building will automatically revert to the new homeowner unless something is differently done at the table when they have the closing. Otherwise, it just simply reverts to the next owner and they take up the payments where the last owner left off. 
If a property owner wishes to pay this in full, they can do so at any point in time, come in, we'll give you the amount that's due on it, and there is no penalty for prepayment. So maybe two years from now they want to pay it off, they can pay it off then, never a penalty on prepaying any of this balance that's due. And that's pretty much all I have, other than to say that originally we estimated this would be $26,556 per property. It came in at $21,922, almost $5,000 per property less. <coughs> and I would just note one thing, upon receipt of the special assessment bill, anybody can pay it in full within two months without any interest charges or penalties whatsoever, if they so desire. Okay. That's very good. Thank you so much for that report. I believe that's all of our professionals speaking this evening. Thank you all for your hard work on this project. I know how a lot of work goes into it, so thank you. Uh, at this time, is there any public comment on this matter? Seeing none, may I have a motion to close the hearing? Uh, I just want to make a comment, so I'm not oh. really the public. Um, I just Sorry. really wanted to thank the team. Um, you don't have a successful uh, project by accident. So I want to thank uh, Dr. Belknap for leading the project as he's led all of the uh, sanitary sewer projects, uh, but also uh, our, our, our attorney, uh, Bill Willard, working on that, mm -hmm. as well as um, uh, Ms. Blaney from tax and Ms. Costa from CFO, and also uh, uh, Mr. Bellinger from engineering. The team worked really hard on this, and the residents for their patients. So this is a very difficult proje project, took, a, took quite a long time, and a lot of barriers that the team had overcome, so they did an exceptional job, um, which gave a successful outcome. So I want to thank uh, all their hard work and teamwork together. Yeah, I just want to say, too, I was heavily involved in the beginning of this project, and uh, I'm amazed how you came in so under budget. Mm -hmm. so, um, great job. Yeah, spectacular. Yeah, I just <clears throat> want to add, I, I had a <clears throat> I became aware of some of the comments that were made during that hearing, and the public was nothing but complimentary. And just that project did feel as well and actually exceeded expectations. I think there was one person that, yeah, you know, w was overly enthused at how well it exceeded and how well it came below budget. So congratulations all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. May I have a motion to close this hearing, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Commander Shet? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Stoachi? Yes. Commander Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Thank you. Next is a resolution adopting the 20. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I forgot where I was for a minute. Next is a resolution adopting the 2014 Sanitary Sewer Extension Project Report of the Tax Assessor recommending a special assessment of the property as it benefited by the construction of the sanitary sewers. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commander Bichette? Yes. Commander Zalcor? Yes. Commander Zarachi? Yes. Deputy Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. And a copy of the resolution, tax assessor report, and special assessment bill will be sent to the owners of the benefited properties. Okay. So thank you. Moving on to considerations this Mayor, evening. Mayor, I apologize. Do, do we announce the Historic Preservation Committee, committee appointment? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, okay. I'm, I apologize. Okay, thank you for checking, but we did. Thank you. Okay, consideration number one is a resolution authorizing the reimbursement of the municipal portion of the property taxes from December 1st, 2016 through December 31st, 2017 for a qualified 100% disabled veteran. Hillsborough Township was the first municipality in Somerset County to offer this benefit to a resident, and we continue to do so as a gesture of thanks for their service and sacrifice. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Commander Shep? Yes. Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Sarachi? Yes. Deputy Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? <coughs> yes. Consideration number two, resolution for ratifying and confirming the execution of a contract for an employee assistance program with Princeton Healthcare System for the period of January 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2018, not to exceed $3,255. Two quotes were received for this service. The qualified purchasing agent recommends Princeton Healthcare Systems, who was the provider for the last five years, for the employee assistance program. By awarding this contract to Princeton Healthcare, it allows for a continuity of service for those participants. This contract is for the 2018 contract period. May I have a motion, please? So moved. 
Second. Thank you. Any comments, Nadeus? From the floor? Okay, roll call, please. Commander Burchett? Yes. Commander Zalcor? Yes. Commander Sirachi? Yes. Deputy Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Consideration number three is a resolution approving uh, the agreement between the Township of Hillsborough and the Somerset County YMCA Hillsborough Branch for the Senior Citizen Exercise Wellness Program. This resolution renews the agreement we have with the YMCA to provide exercise <coughs> services and supplemental benefits through the Senior Exercise Program. Our senior community is a very important and vital part of our township, and it's important to renew this agreement to maintain this very well attended program. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Yes. Second. Thank you. Comments from the dais? Mayor, Anthony? just so you know, since the inception of the, of the program that the committee has approved, uh, working with the YMCA executives, the price has never uh, increased mm -hmm. since uh, 2014. So it's the same price mm -hmm. and same services that we've had from the beginning of the program. So I want to yes. thank the YMCA for their uh, cooperation as well. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Any comments on the floor? Okay, roll call, please. Mayor Rochette? <coughs> yes. In Delcor? Yes. Mayor Sirachi? Yes. Deputy Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Thank you. We're moving on to the consent agenda this evening. Mayor, was that a yes? Yes. Okay. Thank Did you. I say that? Thank <laughs> you. Yes. Thank you. Now we're moving on to the consent agenda this evening. <laughs> May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. <laughs> Second, Mayor. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Any comments from the floor? Okay, seeing none. Roll call, please. Commander Shep? Yes. <laughs> Commander Delcor? Yes. Commander Tarachi? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Okay, it's claims list this evening, 2018-02. May I have a motion to approve the claims list? So moved, Mayor. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Claims <coughs> list? No. Any comments from the floor? Okay, seeing none, roll call, please. Mayor Rochette? Yes. Mayor Zalcor? Yes. Mayor uh, Sirachi? Yes. Secretary Mayor Thompson? Yes. Mayor McCauley? Yes. Okay, that's <coughs> it for this uh, meeting tonight. So, uh, anything else from today? No? I'll move okay. to adjourn. Just move to adjourn. I'll May I have a motion? That. You second? I'll okay, third very good. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. All in favor, I'm sure? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. we are adjourned. Thank you.